Okay, guys, so we're back for the third part. Um, what we did in the last section was just block out these basic areas. We didn't pay too much attention to accuracy, to perfect alignment, to things like that. Uh, we've created this little thimble. Um, we've drawn the lines for these angular tabs. And we have played around, basically, with a few elements using rotate and um, different sh primary shapes and tweaking them using the white arrow. Uh, next stage here really is adding the text on, um, resizing and refining some of the elements um, and basically getting it ready to slice and dice and we will start with some of the adjustments etc at that point as well. So I'm just at the moment going to nudge with arrow keys and try and sort out the size of a few of these elements around the battery. So all I'm doing is just sort of squashing them by handle. You could if you find it difficult to get the right size, you could use the transform tool and just put in a height. You can see that sometimes Illustrator creates these uh, massive sort of decimal places and things on objects, which we may or may not want. Um, key thing again with Illustrator is let it do the legwork for you. You know, those looked fairly well aligned to me, but obviously with the accuracy of Illustrator, if we zoom in on that element, we're going to find that it use the space bar to drag, you're going to find that it's probably slightly out. So let Illustrator just align them for me, like so. Okay. Likewise, I might decide to nudge that in a bit more. Again, select both, just check that I didn't accidentally knock it out of alignment, and we're good to go. So we're going to use the Pathfinder feature. Now, in the previous tutorial, I brought this up with the alignment palette as a separate window. Okay, so it's over here at the moment. In my dock, if I just take this out, uh, you can see at the bottom here, alignment often comes with the Pathfinder palette. So by default, if you have the normal essentials um, thing set up, this won't be visible. So I'm just going to hide it and show you where to find it. So you can find Pathfinder underneath the window menu. Same with alignment. Like I say, they usually come docked together with transform as well if you want to change the size or skew an object and to change your reference point. So if I want to size something but I want to shrink it, you know, take it in from the right, not the left, I can, well, let me show you. I'm going to just deselect select this object. I want to move it in a little. So I'm going to choose the right reference point and I can just um, adjust the width perhaps to be, let's pick it, uh, just 19. Okay, just undo that because I've got the constraint on. Take that off. I can get rid of the extra and it just pulls it in. Okay, so that's what transform is. So with these two elements here, I'm going to check that they're aligned after fiddling with them. Go to Pathfinder, and inside Pathfinder we have a number of different modes here. The first one is called Unite. What this will do is basically add these two shapes, which are two primary sort of simple rectangles, and create a more complex shape. It will become one, in other words. So if I click that, you'll see what I mean. So there's my battery icon, as it were, which later on will be filled with potentially white in this background. Okay. If we scroll down the page a little bit, we have these two elements that we were creating the checkbox with. Again, we can hit that Unite button. Now, here, occasionally, what we find is that objects like this might not be perfectly aligned. Illustrator is that accurate. If you keep zooming in to the maximum amount, it obviously doesn't feel that these two objects are overlapping. So I'm going to ungroup them for a minute. I'm just going to fix that by using the white arrow, the direct selection point, I'm going to select this object, I'm going to make sure they overlap uh, by bringing it right over the top like that. So if I change the fill, you can see which this object is. Okay, so you can see now it's now overlapping this box, which goes behind it. And now when I select both of these objects, using the shift key and go to unite, they will definitely become one. You can see it thinks that there's a second point here. You can see how it's got a, uh, it has a little angle here. So it's actually seeing, excuse me, let's show you with the white arrow. Uh, these are obviously not perfectly aligned. So it has a second point there. So all I want to do is take the pen tool and just clean that up, get rid of one of the duplicate ones. And you can see now that there's one. Um, sometimes it's just so super accurate. It's almost painful. Uh, it can be a very, very, very useful thing, but it can also sometimes confuse people, particularly when they're first learning. 
just going to get rid of that fill. So we're back where we started. I'm going to dock the transform and Pathfinder in the line palettes. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So we've now got that checkbox because we've made it into one and we've cleaned it up. And you see why I did that first rather than uh, making 10 of them. And I'm just going to zoom this, this one down. So I just want it to scale down a little bit. Nudge it into position like so. Okay. If it's again just a tiny bit too big, you can either scale it as I've been doing optically. Or you can come in and just type in a number like 95%. Um, using the scale tool. There's a number of options. There's always more than one way to do things. Pretty much everything in Illustrator. So again, you know, I might want to copy that. In this case, I don't have extra checkboxes. Um, I want to do the same down the bottom here with these two elements. So I don't want the background box. So I'm just going to hold down the shift. Do is drag over, hold down the shift key and drag over the bits I don't want. So I only want these two that are going to make the plus symbol. Again, just to be careful, I like to be a bit anal about these things, but it pays off later on. I'm just going to make Illustrator do the hard work and check something look like it moved there. Um, in case I've accidentally nudged something, go back to Pathfinder, hit Align, uh, sorry, hit Unite. Okay, so that becomes a single shape as well. So you can see how we're building more complex shapes out of single shapes, especially when they're geometric, extremely powerful. Okay, next thing I want to do is put some typing. So I'm going to go up to the type tool. Now we can use type in a number of different ways. Uh, first way is just to simply come onto the page and to click. I'm clicking at the bottom here, round about guessing where the middle is. And I'm just going to click once on the page. Normally where you click becomes the baseline. You can see on this little eye beam, there's like a line towards the bottom of the eye, which is the baseline. That's where the type is going to sit on top of that. So I'm going to type in my 00, zero colon 22 colon 17. Okay. I'm going to select all under the select menu to select all that text. It's clearly not big enough, so I'm going to jack it up a bit, maybe next size up maybe even more, let's just guess it's 60. And you can see at the moment, it's going to the right. By default, tends to align left, so the text is running that way. If I come up to the align palette, sorry, not this align, I want paragraph, um, excuse me, I want the alignment for the type. And I hit center, okay. And what I will need to do later is change this, because obviously I've got, by default, using Myriad uh, Pro, for some reason it doesn't have the lighter weights. And that's not the font that I'm using, but it will do for now. Again, it's a block out of content rather than a, a style thing. We're going to copy it, again, using the baseline to align. This time we want to go back to our type. We clearly don't want it that large. I'm guessing around about 18, lucky guess. And I can start typing. Um, in this case, it's capital letters, but obviously I could type in lowercase and then select caps on the next screen, so until history 110, pop that in, okay, again, alt and drag like we were doing before, down, um, I'm going to put this one uh, down over here, so I'm going to align it in the center underneath that, I'll just zoom in a little bit, control and plus on the keyboard to zoom in, control minus, to zoom out again too big this time i'm going to make it bold or semi bold and this needs to probably go down to I'm guessing around about 10 maybe up a point size to 11 something like that again we'll come back later uh, to improve this again alt and copy you can see how much i love the shortcut of alt it just saves me a lot of, you can control c control v but alt and drag it where you want it suits me fine um, I think it's 17, yeah, looks about right. Okay, um, so I've decided that maybe both of these need to be a tiny bit heavier, just for now, so I'm just going to increase that. Obviously, later on, I'd probably want to put an at symbol here, so again, just Alt, Control, put in my at symbol. Uh, in this case, you know, it needs to be a bit larger because it's part of the icon. So I'd, I'd 
adjust that accordingly and put it in the right position. Okay. Uh, move down again. Um, now in this case, I'm going to use a slightly different method of text. So we were using what we call using before is called point type traditionally in Illustrator. We just click on a point and type, and it will literally keep going until it hits the edge of the workspace. I want to use area type here, which is where you click and drag out. Now the reason I'm using that for this is I want to create a column. Okay, these things are clearly aligned. I've got a right edge, a left edge, and these are aligned down this edge here. So I've just clicked and dragged and guessed roughly where. So I'm going to again put in uh, my text, hit return, history 110. I'm going to hit a tab key. I'm going to type in due uh, today. Okay, it's like a homework reminder tool. Now, you can see when I'm putting in tabs, and because I'm working with centered, the alignment's a bit awry. So, I'll go to my paragraph tab, align it all left for now. Okay, I will sort out the tab in a minute. This one needs to shrink a bit. This looks about the right size, but this looks clearly a bit large so I'm just going to bring it down to 40. Um, I will adjust all the spacing and lettering a bit better in a minute. So I'm going to copy what I've got there, edit, copy, select it all with text, hit a return. Now I normally people would probably hit a second return there. I don't like doing that. I'll show you why later. So I'm going to put it in and I'm going to use kind of um, paragraph styles to shift the headings down as it were. Okay. Also, I probably don't want these to be bold. I should have changed it before I moved it. We'll go back to regular on these. And we go back to regular on this one. And I do the same again and paste. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just deselect the type at the moment. Because if I have type editing mode and I hit the control T or T or something like that, or some of the shortcuts, what will happen is obviously stick a T in there. If I now hit Command or Control T, whichever it is, it brings up the character palette. I'm going to go to the right here and show options. And this gives me control over things like um, stretching and what have you. It also gives me control over kerning, all sorts of things. I've got my option to make things capitals or not automatically. Uh, it's great for a lot of things. You've also got your, interestingly enough, a screen, you've got your anti-aliasing, like whether you want it sharp, crisp, strong, or what, which is how sharp the edges of the type are. I'm leaving them on default for the moment. Okay. Plus, docked with it, we usually have the paragraph one, um, again with its options, which I'm going to use now. So I'm going to choose this second paragraph line here, so second title, as it were. And I've got options here to increase the spacing before the paragraph. So I'm going to use this instead, because this is a better way of doing it. Normally, if this were an app or if this were a website, I would be using CSS to pad this out. Okay. Once I've got that setting on there, I can actually use the eyedropper to pick it up and apply it elsewhere. Okay. So you can see, apart from the fact that I forgot to recopy, we've pretty much repeated that. Okay. The only issue I have now is I can't see the thing. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, drag it to the side. I might not be done with the control part, the character parts. I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to go in now and edit these bits. So this is questions on page two five three. Um, hashtag I'm on the Mac, so that is Alt three. Uh, two five three. Sorry, not two five three. One questions one to ten. Okay. Um, Technically, they have a space in here. doesn't really matter because I'm doing a tutorial copy in it. I'll use that. Forget about the fact the font is not the same. doesn't have the same spacing. We sort all that out later. Change this to group project. Um, that's chemistry. I'll show you the capital thing in a second with this. Uh, 150. So... And that's due, so this is obviously assignments, things like that. Due Friday. Uh, you can see that on this app they're making quite a big use of um, lowercase letters, etc. Okay, so we're pretty much good to go with that. Okay, 